So today we'll take a look at a really amazing Oathbreaker Paladin build that also combines the powers of the Warlock to achieve some really insane damage numbers, gain some extra attacks every turn, as well as a number of very interesting mechanics that will just make this version of the Paladin a lot better than just going pure Paladin spec. Plus, we will fuel our demonic powers with our unending charisma to essentially reach these really crazy levels. So let's dive right in. Now this setup works very similar to the pure spec paladin that we covered a while ago with the exception that some of the interactions from the warlock class and its subclasses will provide us a ton of extra damage and some extra attacks every turn especially from the packed weapons which have a very odd interaction right now where they do stack with the extra attack from a level 5 paladin plus we gain some extra bonus damage from the oath breaker aura at level 7 and also some of the items we're gonna add on top will literally bring this to the next level so let's go over how to build this character obviously this is going to be something you will switch to around the middle of the game towards the end because we're gonna continue from our paladin build from before so in this case we're no longer going to use the oath of vengeance because once you reach act 3 it's going to be almost impossible to break this and become an oath breaker and on top of that oath of devotion by level 7 has a really interesting aura that can help against charms if you want to stick with that for a bit longer but otherwise this is easy to break you just go in attack somebody and you can become an oath breaker right away ability wise we're not going to start with the default 16 14 16 from strength constitution and charisma or 17 15 strength and charisma because we already have an end game pair of gloves that gives us 23 so we can dump that strength stat and instead focus a bit more onto constitution and charisma especially charisma since this is going to be another modifier that will further buff our damage with our abilities that's why we will want 20 with that as well and from this point on we will spend our first six levels just leveling the paladin class so we get our smite abilities at level two as well as the great weapon fighting which is going to be important for the weapon selection we use we also get some other smite abilities as we level up and depending on our race choice at around character level four this is when we unlock our feats and the first one will be the great weapon master this is what gives us our huge damage well increases that we get from this when we critical hit and we will do that quite often at level five this is when we get our extra attack as well as a bunch of other important skills here to use definitely make sure that you incorporate the shield of faith at some point we will use this almost constantly to gain a bunch of advantages not just the armor class increase and then finally at level six this is where we will stop with the paladin and this is when we also get the aura of protection once we get like 20 charisma this is going to give us a plus five to all of our saving throws so this build right here is extremely tanky not just dealing a ton of damage it's going to have a ton of ac will have a lot of saving throws so enemies barely hit you and even if they do hit you there's not going to be much in terms of damage that you get now from this point on we're not gonna get the seventh level in the paladin just yet instead we will immediately jump into the warlock and that is because we're gonna jump straight into the subclasses now my favorite here is going to be the great old one because of that fright mechanic so when we perform critical hits enemies around the primary target will get frightened and this is going to cause them to basically not be able to move for the turn they also gain disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls and essentially will make them easier to hit while for them it's going to be much harder to hit you we can also grab armor of agathys which is actually really good and if you're planning to go oathbreaker eventually then i recommend picking something different than hellish rebuke since you get that from the oathbreaker as well anyway once we reach level 3, this is also when we get invocations and probably the best here is the Devil's Sight. So this is going to solve all our low light issues, to not be able to hit enemies properly. This is going to let us see through darkness, both magical and normal one up to 24 meters. And not just that, we can even combine this later on with a darkness spell, either if we pick a draw race or if we go with Oathbreaker Darkness or even the one from leveling Warlock, we can place that down and gain other advantages. And since we have high levels of charisma anyway, I'm picking Agonizing Blast, just buff the damage on the Eldritch Blast and kind of make this whole build have a bit of a range component in there too. 
Once we reach Warlock level 3 or Character level 9, this is when we get access to the Bind Pact weapon. This is going to let us bind our main weapon, our greatsword in this case, and make it scale of charisma instead of strength. But when you attack with this, it's going to both scale off your strength as well as your charisma at the same time. Both of these are going to be high on this character and you will see that they will both account or the final damage that you deal or the final damage calculation which i think is really awesome but there's one final advantage that we get from this a couple of levels after in the meantime at level four this is when we get another feat so in this case we're always going to pick two more points into charisma bump that to 20 eventually 22 if you can also get the mirror and have it that way but once we reach level 5 with the Warlock or 11 with our character, this is when we get the Deepened Pact and this is going to add an extra attack with Pact Weapons. And for some reason, this right now works on top of the extra attack that you got at level 5 with the Paladin. So this means in reality, if you also use Pact Weapon, you're going to have two extra attacks per turn on top of the actions and the bonus actions that you already come with. So that's about three or four attacks per turn with just this attack right here, including the two extras, the action, as well as the bonus action. So that's going to be much better than if you were to go pure paladin spec and you still retain, nay, you will even add a lot of bonus damage on top of your attacks outside of this. Finally, the last level, we will go back at the Paladin. So this is going to be seventh level in the Paladin class and will also give us the Aura of Devotion, which is helpful against charms. However, once we switch to the Oathbreaker, this will turn into the Aura of Hate and this is going to give us extra damage on all of our attacks. And this is going to be really, really great because it works on every single damage instance. So let's go over some of the items and how you can get them. Now, of course, I covered these before. So if you want to check those videos out, I definitely recommend doing so, especially the ones from the House of Hope. Now, we will use the Helm of Balduran. This is going to provide us some healing every single turn at the start of the turn. We also gain a plus one to both armor class as well as to saving throws. So this is going to put us at a plus six saving throws with just 20 charisma and the saving throw that we got from the aura of protection then we have the cloak of protection another plus one to ac and to saving throws so we have a total of seven in saving throws thus far and you can buy this quite early in act two from one of the vendors at the last light in now in the end game i'm using the legendary version of the hell dusk armor however until this point you can go with adamanted splint armor from grimforge in act one it totally works but this gives us a lot more ac it comes with some nice resistances over there to fire and especially if enemies do hit you the spellcasters at the very least if they hit you you're going to apply burning damage against them maybe it's not the best option but it definitely helps with reaching very high levels of ac and kind of becoming untouchable so that's why i use it Plus, it's not considered armor, so it's not heavy armor. It's just not going to count for that. You can literally wear it on any type of class. For the gauntlets, we use the Hill Giant Strength. This just raises our strength to 23, the ones that we get from the House of Hope. So definitely worth it. Plus, we get a plus one to, yes, saving throws. Well, strength saving throws, but it still counts. For the next ones, we have the Evasion Shoes. This gives another plus one to armor class and a bit more to acrobatics. And this is something that we also get from the last light in one of the vendors again in Act 2. So you can probably get some really nice AC just by that point. Now, towards the end of the game, we're going to use the Balduran Giant Slayer. Until then, of course, we already covered some of the other options, even the Orphic Hammer and some of the others. But specifically here, Giant Slayer achieves the highest damage because it also scales up more from our strength modifier. So this applies to any enemy you attack. You're going to get another plus to the strength modifier, which is really nice. And yes, it does work even with the packed weapons. Plus, we have the giant form, which further increases our damage and just makes our attack rolls a lot, lot better. Now, a couple of other items that we use is the amulet of the greater health. This just helps us with the HP, with the constitution, raises it to 23, so you can just keep it like that. But for the rings, I do have two options that are really good. So this includes the caustic band, which is going to make our weapon attacks to deal two bonus acid damage. And then we also have the strange conduit ring. This is something you get from, I believe, the Githyanki crash. 
so it's going to buff our damage by another one to four psychic damage while we concentrate on a spell so this is constantly going to be applied on all of our attacks because we're always going to run with the shield of faith for the plus two to the ac and for the fact that it lasts until a long rest so we're constantly gonna have that we're gonna be really hard to beat in the concentration department we're not gonna fail any of those and not just that every single instance of the damage gets the bonus psychic damage so activate the auras also have all of these items equipped and yeah meet all of the conditions concentrating on a spell i could deal up to 86 divine smite damage from all of these instances plus of course from the giant form this is going to buff that damage really really high now i'm pretty sure you can reach 90 maybe even 94 or 100 depending if you like switch around a bunch of items so the way i play with this is obviously as a frontliner you're going to always go up into the enemy's face and just go ham at it your 26 into the ac will keep your survivability very high enemies will almost constantly miss you and even if they do hit you somehow they almost cannot break your concentration your saving throws are going to just be too high you also have extra resistances like the one from the fire which is one of the more common elements enemies attack you with anyway so you're going to stay there for prolonged periods of time even like fighting 20 enemies at the same time with ease and you're not going to have any problem and even if you do you still have lay on hands and basically go back to full hp and once you see that you can just cast a smite destroy them completely move on to the next enemy one shot that as well next one third the same and you can also have like a fourth attack and have an enemy down as well especially with some of the critical hits that you get from the weapon masters and some of the other passives so the damage over here is going to be through the roof i think that you can easily reach 400 damage per turn with this the only kind of problem you're going to have is mobility maybe because you don't have so much movement speed per turn However, if you do spec into the Illithid powers, which in my opinion I think just fits very well a corrupted kind of paladin build, you can go with the fly mechanic and also the 9 realms buff which is going to guarantee those critical hits. And speaking of the critical hits, once you do bonk an enemy in the head with a critical hit, everybody around it will get stuck with the feared effect so they can no longer move away from you so you can just keep them in sight deal damage and the remaining party members can stay safe and also cast their own abilities this is why i also recommended to go with the oath of the ancients not only do you get some really powerful bonuses over there as you level up but you can also break it very easily by just attacking any non-hostile npc so once you do that you can go back add oathbreaker guy get the Oathbreaker and yeah just invest points into whatever you want over here and we also have some of these dreadful aspects and other ways to implement fear into enemies but we don't really need that because we do that on critical hits however you still have the option to do so plus i didn't take into account the spiteful suffering which you can totally still use by the way so you can have another one to four necrotic damage on each of your attacks for that target for well a couple of turns i guess three turns in total so you can easily reach that 100 damage as i've said before from the spite suffering alone but this is pretty much it let me know down below if you run with any other variations of this build thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video